I can still hear her, but I can't see her. Maybe I'm a ghost. <laughs> I was asking in some of my group chats what if anybody had any stories for our subject today, and they didn't send me a voice clip, but they told me to look something up that's local so I can talk about that. But oh, um, awesome. for for some reason, I've just had the Gilmore Girls theme song in my head all day now. The Haunted Road. The Haunted Road. So, Emily, what are we talking about today? Hi. Um, first off, my name's Emily. And my name's Dave. And we have this beautiful podcast called Rowan and Pine. Today, the topic that I'm covering is Haunted Roads. Ooh, spooky. <laughs> um, I'm actually pretty excited for it just because I love um, telling spooky stories. Even though it's really funny, I feel like, I don't know if you're the same, but like when I hear or read ghost stories, I rarely get scared. Like I'm rarely freaked out by them. They have to be really good. Yeah, but I absolutely love them. Like, I love hearing them. Same. But one of these stories actually did, like, thoroughly freak me out. Oh, so, sweet. Yeah. I was going to say that this is our first episode that's really kind of like, because we keep saying we're a spooky podcast, but then we're, like, covering um, <laughs> fairies. <laughs> I know that was something that I thought about when I was, like, trying to think of, like, what I would do for this episode. I was like, okay, well... We're do- kind of doing like the folklore stuff and the like cryptid stuff. I don't, I think I said this the other day. I don't know if werewolves are considered a cryptid or just mythology. I think it's mythology. Yeah, I think it's mythology because I don't think anybody's out here saying they saw werewolves. Right. Actually, I meant to send you this, but somebody, there was like a TikTok of somebody said they had spotted a Sasquatch. Oh my I'm going to try and find it. But like the top comment, and it was so freaking true. It was like, how come every time somebody spots one of these animals, they're recording on a toaster? Like it's the worst quality <laughs> camera you've ever seen. It's like, is this from 2004? Like, what is this? Right. They're using one of those like large cameras that have like a VHS tape in them from like the 80s. Yeah. And the VHS tape's already been recorded over about eight times. <laughs> and, uh, it's like the Super Bowl or something was on it, or the the GAA All Ireland Final for my Irish listeners. <laughs> I was like, the what? <laughs> it's like our sport oh here. Goodness. We have like an All Ireland yeah. Final. Yeah, it's very big deal. So something that I haven't found any video evidence of is are these haunted roads. <laughs> nice segue. I like it. Thank you. But yeah, dash cams definitely. Although, have you seen that one video? I think it was in Alaska or maybe Russia. It's in like some uh, low population, like super snowy place. And these people are driving and then it looks like there's this weird like man type figure crossing the road in front of them. No. Oh my yeah. God. Can you put that on our, our Instagram? I want to see I should. It. I really should. Yes. Because it's... See if you can find it. Right. So I don't know if that's like necessarily a haunted road, but definitely mm. creepy. And I will look for it to post on the Instagram. Yes. I love anything that, like, I can't stop staring at because it's kind of freaking me out. You know what I mean? I'm like, I can't stop looking. Yeah, it gives you that, like, uneasy feeling. But you, like, Mm -hmm. just can't look away. Yeah. Yeah. It's been my problem since childhood, so. (laughs) I used to read, like, scary books and then just stare at the pages. And then I'd see them when I, like, close my eyes. You know, like, the illustrations and stuff. And I'm like, why did I stare at that for so long? And now it's burned into my brain. Yeah, there was a book at my grandparents' house, and it wasn't scary, but it was, like, scary to me. I was really afraid of thunderstorms when I was a kid, as I think, like, a lot of kids are. Mm -hmm. But there was, like, a book about, like, a little bunny, and it's, like, like, you know, it's, like, this nice, friendly book, and, like, this little bunny, all of a sudden, it's, like, and then there was a storm and, like, a tapping on the window, and this little bunny's, like, in his bed, and it's, like, all scared, and it's, like, a very dark, like, illustrated page. And I was super freaked out by it. But I would always be like, I have to turn to this page. (laughs) Yeah, you just want to see it again. There was one, I think it was actually an episode of The Moomins. Did you you get The Moomins growing up? No, but I think that's like Nordic or like Swedish. Yeah, something like that. But there's like an episode of The Moomins and there's like definitely a ghost story in it. And there was like a little like ghost child. And I just remember him crying by a window and he was like glowing blue. And that was burned into my brain as well. And I'm just like... Ooh. And I remember <laughs> being so scared of it, but then like every Halloween I would hope it would be on again because I wanted to see it again. Yeah. It was terrifying. Yeah, I know that feeling exactly. So the first haunted road that I'm talking about is Jeremy Swamp Road 
in Southbury, Connecticut. Most of the roads that I'm talking about are in the U.S. There is one that's in England. <laughs> I don't know if this is like an internet thing, but um, so this road in Connecticut has had multiple people go missing, never to be seen again. Some of them were hikers. Some of them were people whose cars had broken down and they were stranded on the side of the road, never to be seen again. This road is also known for melon heads. These are small humanoids with oversized heads. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, okay weird <laughs> um the history of melon heads is present in other countries as well as the u.s supposedly there was a large family of melon heads who lived in bavaria germany in the 19th century an inbred family of melon heads was said to live in england as well there is another theory that melon head comes from the word melungeon which is essentially the mixed race children of appalachia um these children oh my god <laughs> i know i know terrible these children come from Europeans who had children with Native Americans or freed slaves. <gasps> Isn't that awful? That is like, what the frick? Like, so it's... <laughs> what the what? <laughs> interracial. I was like, what the fricker? I was like, I forgot I could curse on this. So it's like, it's like a freaking trifecta. It's like interracial, like just making fun of people from Appalachia. Yeah. And... And what was it there with freed slaves? What the hell? Right. They're like, oh, they're just the uh, backcountry mixed race people. We call them melon heads. Oh God. Some other theories were that melon heads were the result of a family of witches inbreeding over multiple generations. A group who escaped from Fairfield Hills Hospital or another unknown mental institution that burned down. This caused the escape patients to turn to cannibalism, which caused their heads to swell. These theories are pretty oh wild. My God. <laughs> and then thirdly, it was said that there were children in Michigan who were born with hydrocephalus. I think that's how you say. Um, and mm -hmm. hydrocephalus is an accumulation of spinal fluid on the brain. It's usually more apparent in babies because their heads will grow really quickly and disproportionately. But it, these children were sent to an insane asylum and eventually released into the woods. What the hell? <laughs> so they were just like, oh, these big headed kids. <laughs> Nobody's going to want them. <laughs> For real. <laughs> And then they're just, like, wandering the East Coast, torturing people, apparently. <laughs> um, there is a story from the 1980s of a group of girls driving around after a Friday night football game. They had heard of the melon head, so they went out looking for them. This is, again, this is in, it's in Connecticut, so we're not in Michigan or Appalachia anymore. <laughs> but Okay, um, so they're, like, wandering melon heads, then. Yeah, yeah, they're nomadic lemon heads, or melon heads. <laughs> lemon heads. I was going to say, because lemon heads are a band. The Wandering Melon Heads is a great name for, like, a grunge band. <laughs> for sure. But, um, so these girls had heard of the melon heads, so they went out looking for them. They parked the car and left the headlights as they ventured out into the woods. After they walked for a bit into the woods, they heard a car door slam. The engine started, and the car headed towards them. The girls say they saw figures inside that were the size of children but had large heads with an orange glow in their eyes. Some, oh my god. Some people say <laughs> that they still see the little blue car driving around to this day with the melon heads inside. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. So they got carjacked by like <laughs> little little big headed children? Little melon headed children. Why did I explain that to your parents? <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, we saw Parents, okay, so how much acid do you did you do when right. you were in the woods? You're like, no, they had hydrocephalus. <laughs> hydrocephalus that was like never treated or like anything, so. Yeah. But they're still there walking around just yeah. fine. <laughs> they're still children with large heads. Yeah. Hydrocephalus, by the way, like I'm pretty sure like most kids just make a, like a full recovery. You have to get like a shunt put in of the back of your head to drain the fluid. Yeah. But like... It's just so funny. It's like they just wrote them off. It's like not massive heads. Just it, yeah, just get rid of them. tossed them into the woods, making them become feral, feral infants with massive heads. Yes, yeah, toppling over. <laughs> <laughs> um. So our next haunted road is Route Forty Four in Rehoboth, Massachusetts. So a lot of these are. Oh no, they're not all on the East Coast. But a lot of the ones that I, when I was researching, a lot of them were on the East Coast. And I was like, what is up with the East Coast of the United States? It's got a lot of ghost stories. Anyway, this is the one that actually freaked me out. Oh, sweet. So are you ready? Mm -hmm. I'm ready. <laughs> I wish I had some s'mores or something. Like, it would be, that would be cool if I was, like, all, like, bundled up with a hot chocolate. But it's hot as balls here in Ireland, so. Get your blankies out. 
and cuddle up because this is scary. <laughs> At least to me. Okay. Um, Lay it on me. So this one is called The Redheaded Hitchhiker of Route 44. For decades, there have been reports of a hitchhiker seen with red hair, wearing a flannel shirt, dirty jeans, boots, and a large bushy beard with dark soulless eyes. There are times that he has his thumb out trying to catch a ride and some people will pick him up after seeing him wandering down the road. He will never sit in the passenger seat. He only ever gets into the back seat. When the drivers ask where he is headed, he won't ever say anything. He just points forward down the road in the same direction that he was walking. After traveling for a while in complete silence, he will start giggling. <gasps> the giggles turn into maniacal laughter, hurting the ears of anyone who is in the vehicle. I hate this. <laughs> Cue your cat screaming in the background. <laughs> okay, sorry. Can you hear that? I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. No, Meow. that's so funny. It's like the sound effects. Had the giggling. Meow. Yeah. But yeah, so this is the one that freaks me out because just like the giggling. I like when I read it at first, I got chills. Oh, I was like, oh, no. Absolutely not. So like he's giggling and shit. And you if you threaten to throw him out, he'll disappear no matter how fast the vehicle is traveling. A woman who stopped to pick up the hitchhiker said that as he went to grab the door handle, he disappeared. Shortly after this, her car battery died. Even though he disappeared, she could still hear him laughing. No. Um. I know. No. I don't like this. <laughs> Just like creepy old dude laughter. Yeah. Um. There's a there's another story of a man who saw the hitchhiker on the side of the road, and within seconds he appeared in the back seat. <gasps> and then this man's radio began scanning the stations at a really low loud volume. Others have said they have seen the hitchhiker hanging onto the side of their cars as they're driving, no matter what speed. No. I know it's terrible. No. Creepy. <laughs> I think you need your hot chocolate now. Yeah, I definitely need a blankie. <laughs> so while he's holding on to the side of the car, they would see his face in all of the mirrors or hear his laughter over the radio. Uh, what yeah. are you laughing at, man? Like, giving yeah. people a <laughs> freaking heart attack? What's so funny? Oh my... You have dirty jeans and a beard. Uh, Sit the fuck down. <laughs> yeah, just keep walking. Why are you trying to get in my car? You are like, fall into a ditch or something. Just leave us alone. Yeah, I wonder what happens if you, like, try and run him over. He probably still ends up in the car. Probably. Just absolutely relentless. He probably would just, like, be hanging on to your car, but, like, in pieces. Oh, my God. I just creep myself uh, out. There's probably, like, some poor, like, ginger guy who's... Because ginger people are creepy anyway. I'm just going to say that. Um, <laughs> probably... Well, that's what it is. They said he's redheaded. Yeah. There's probably some poor, like, red, red-headed red guy who, like, people are refusing. He's, like, really needs a lift. And they're just, like, absolutely not. Oh, that's, no. <laughs> that's a hitchhiker. And he's, like, yeah, but, like, I twisted my ankle. And they're, like, I don't give a fuck. It's the hitchhiker. Right. He's, like, I just I just got in a horrible car accident. Can you help me? No, sir. <laughs> no. Get away from my car. <laughs> and then they speed away. Oh, my God. I've never heard oh. that. I've heard, like, obviously, like, hitchhiker stories. And we'll probably get into some more of those. But, like, holy fuck. <laughs> Yeah, I do not like that one. Hanging on to the Super side of creepy. the car? No. Yeah, and the giggling. The giggling is what, like, really, truly freaks me Ugh, out. Ugh, I feel nauseous. <laughs> I already know the messages I'm going to get after we post this episode of people going, what the fuck? <laughs> after traveling to Massachusetts for that terrible story, we're coming back to my hometown that I'm currently in. So this is not my hometown but it is where i currently call yeah. home <laughs> your adopted hometown yeah so it's archer avenue in chicago illinois which i don't think it's actually in chicago but it's right outside of it this is where the legend of resurrection mary comes from the first sighting of mary was in 1939 when a man named jerry palace was at a local dance hall and he met a young blonde woman dressed in white he danced with her all night long and then offered her a ride home she accepted the ride and had him drive down archer avenue she then had him stop in front of Resurrection Cemetery, where she disappeared before even reaching the gates of the cemetery. What the fuck? I love, like, Resurrection Mary is such a good story, and I really wish I knew somebody who would want to drive down there with me to see if we could get her in the car. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, like, it's, so, like, the insinuation is that she was buried in the in the cemetery. Oh my god. And the fact that, like, she just wanted to go out and have a dance and just meet a boy. Yeah. And then freak the shit out of him. Mm -hmm. In fairness, like, there's more stories. What a queen. <laughs> That's what I'd do if I was a ghost. Right. Just find men to absolutely terrify. Just, uh, pop up out of your grave. Yeah. Freak them yeah. out. Why not? <laughs> Make them think they're having a really good date and then just disappear into a cemetery. <laughs> Bye, bitch. <laughs> See ya. <laughs>
Another story that made the papers was in 1979 when a taxi driver, who did not want to be named, picked up a young woman in a white dress. Again, like our boy Jerry, she had the taxi driver drive down Archer Avenue. He said she abruptly made him stop in front of Resurrection Cemetery. The door never opened and she vanished. The taxi driver said, and I quote, When I turned, she was gone, vanished, and the door never opened. May the good Lord strike me dead. It never opened. Oh. End quote. <laughs> that's a that's a man who be- means business when he was like swearing to Jesus. Right. And when he wants to be remain anonymous because he knows that people in 1979 are going to probably come after his ass for lying about a ghost. Yeah. And he's probably like, in fairness, like tail end of the 70s, people are probably like, he smokes some stuff and then he drives around. So <laughs> we're not going to get yeah. in his taxi again. He could lose his job. Yeah. Yeah. Go, that, that freaking weirdo. It's already a gamble <laughs> (laughs) you get in with a taxi driver that you don't know so make it more of a gamble Mm -hmm. over the years there have been dozens of stories of nearly the same interaction man dancing with a young woman in a white dress only to have her disappear or else people will pick her up to drive her to her destination having her vanish near the cemetery others have reported seeing her jump in front of oncoming traffic and then vanishing there are a few variations on who the ghost resurrection mary is but the most well known is that she was out dancing with her boyfriend at the o henry ballroom they got into an argument and mary left the ballroom to walk home alone on her walk home she was struck by a vehicle that fled her parents were the ones who found her put her in a white dress and had her buried in resurrection cemetery the rumors of the manner of her death align with some panicked phone calls that the police have gotten so people have called 911 reporting a woman laying in the road wearing white appearing to have been struck by a vehicle but when the police show up to investigate there's nothing there there's no sign that anyone was ever there or hit by a vehicle or anything oh my god so that one's kind of creepy but i'd like to see her i want to go see resurrection mary like it's it's that striking sort of image of like a lady in white like there's for anybody who's watched Su- so many stories about yeah it. for anybody who's watched um supernatural that's like one of their kind of earlier episodes is like the woman in white and oh i feel like i remember yeah. this like in the first like eight good seasons before it totally exploded yeah <laughs> and they had they had like a woman in white where they played on like this hitchhiker theory yeah i definitely heard stories like that growing up like close to where close to where i like i've i was born and where i like live now so um yeah the lady in white is kind of like a i think that could even be an episode because there's so much so many stories about this like quote unquote lady in white the indication is always that it was like some like young like girl or young woman who was in love and something tragic happened to her and like she's kind of she's right. always either like trying to get home or searching for her lover or it's always like a sad story. It's never, it never seems yeah. to be anything malicious. And it's, I think obviously that's part of the reason why she always gets picked up. Like anybody yeah. driving and they'd see like a young girl, like at the side of the road, like most people would stop to help her, you know, yeah. whereas you're a freaking ginger guy. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> no sir i don't care if it's literally a thunderstorm outside you get away from my car so the next story is the siren bridge in siren wisconsin and this was another interesting story to me because um my grandparents and extended family um live not too far from siren wisconsin it's such a great name for a, like a town i love some of like the american like town names where it's like It'll be like named something like because all of our names are just anglicized Irish names. So like they're just gibberish. Yeah. Yeah. We do have some interesting names over here. It'll just be like named after a person or something. Yeah. Or like isn't there somewhere called like Truth and Consequence or something like that? There is. I've never heard of yeah, it. Yeah. I, it's, I feel like it's in the south somewhere. I could be wrong though. But yeah, it's like Truth and Consequence or Truth or Consequence. And it's just like that's just a cool name. It's like where are you from? Truth or Consequence. <laughs> Yeah, there's like, there's a town in Minnesota called Emily, which is super cool. Cool. Another place that I think is really funny is, it's in Texas. Everybody calls it Amarillo. Yeah. But it, but in Spanish, it's amarillo, which means yellow. Oh, but like everybody says amarillo, and there was that, <laughs> which is really funny. I'm like, there was that song like, is this the way to amarillo? Do you remember that? <laughs> Every night I've been hugging no, my pillow. <laughs> See, that doesn't rhyme with the Spanish version. I just think it's weird. Anyway, so back to Siren, Wisconsin. This is a place like my family and stuff would camp. Super interesting. Random, like such weird stuff has happened in Siren, Wisconsin. They had a really bad tornado. And if you Google Siren, Wisconsin, you can see this. It's like a small metal boat 
that got like thrown at a tree and now it's just like wrapped around the tree oh. and the person left it up and like put a sign next to it that said like siren tornado <laughs> that's cool so it's almost like a natural art installation yeah and there was also this like pretty awful shooting there where this guy was like on the road that was like leading into the city and he was just like open firing at cars oh, shit which was like terrifying oh my god but the haunted road doesn't have anything to do with that <laughs> But it's just an interesting place. In the 1980s in Siren, Wisconsin, a family, their names were Rick and Rose Kringle and their daughter Jody. They got into a car accident. Their car slid on an icy bridge and crashed into the water below. They did not manage to escape. Ever since the accident, there have been reports of eerie occurrences in the area near the accident. People have reported their car radio cutting out and hearing a child's voice say, Mommy, I can't get out. Other reports have said that they hear, I can't get out, I can't get out, screaming through the radio the entire time they're driving across the bridge. Other people have also reported hearing ghostly screams near the bridge. Oh my god. Yeah. That, like, the radio thing? Holy shit. I don't know, like, what is it about, like, when ghosts interfere with technology? Why is that so freaky? It's almost overdone in horror movies and TV shows, but when you hear about it, or when you read about it, it's really scary. Yeah, it's somehow scary. Yeah, I think your imagination is, like, worse than any, like, any horror movies or anything like that. Like, I would find myself, sure. if I read, like, a scary book, it would scare the shit out of me, whereas a horror film, I'm just like, if there's... <laughs> if there's a bit of gore like i'll probably look away if it's like something or if you can see bone or something like that i'm just like Bleh. but if there's like ghosts in the mirror or anything like that i'm just like where where is it that like netflix show well like they made a, a few of them but it's like uh the haunting of hill house oh, okay so like the whole like first season of that like part of the fun of it is there's loads of hidden ghosts in it so like somebody will be just having they'll be having like a normal scene and then like if you like happen to look over at like the mirror there's just a person standing in the mirror it's really cool and it's really fun like it's a fun like way to like watch a show because you're just like oh my god like did you see that and like people like went on reddit and they were like saying there was a ghost at like such and such a time like in this episode and it's really cool find the easter eggs yeah like i love all that shit but like when you're for some reason when you're reading it it's just it freaks the hell out of me that's so funny because um my husband started watching that the first season of the hill house and um i think he watched it the whole way through but i think he would usually watch it like before bed or something so i would be like laying on the couch and just like closing my eyes but i would like hear what Mm -hmm. was going on but there was like a few times i opened my eyes and it like scared me enough where i was like okay i'm done I'm not watching this. It was like, yeah, Cause I'm it's, a- it's the first TV show for like a while. It was like, wow, this is really well made, like decently made. The other ones, the other seasons yeah. like set in other places aren't quite as good, but um, pretty great for like a haunted house TV show. I'm such a terrible, like super into spooky stuff, but I will not watch horror movies because I get like, I don't know, I get freaked out. <laughs> I think especially like when you get to our age, you know your limits. Like I think when you're like a teenager, you try and be brave and like go through it, but like by our age and I were just like, no, I just can't watch that. I can't do that. So I'm not going to <laughs> like, um, <laughs> right. I'm yeah. I'm not going to like lose some sleep over like a TV show, you know, I'm not going to have it bother me for like the following week. <laughs> Our next road is in called Ortega Ridge Road in Montecito, California. This road is said to be haunted by three ghostly nuns known as Las Tres Hermanas. The three sisters? You like my Spanish? Thank you. Nice. Yep, the three sisters. These nuns apparently stand with their arms crossed on the side of the road. The legend says that these nuns were from a Santa Barbara mission and decided to travel out of the city toward a Native American village to bring supplies such as candles and medicine to those in need. It is said that they did not reach the village, but were robbed and killed by bandits. Other stories also claim that uh, it was a group of Native Americans who kidnapped and tortured them. I don't know which one to believe, but I'm like a little annoyed by like the Native American story because I'm just like, is this some colonization at work? (laughs) I think we almost need like a klaxon on this podcast of like, sounds racist, probably bullshit. (laughs) Yeah, probably. Because I just like... It's like... It was like, yeah, the Native Americans like beat the shit out of them and tortured them and like they still forgave them anyway. And it's just kind of like, okay. Yeah, that sounds like Christian propaganda. Right. But <laughs> even if it was, like, even if this was the case, does it say what year this was? No, it doesn't say. I'm assuming it was a long time ago. 
because a Native American village, I don't know, just like the fact that they were bringing candles and stuff to a village makes me think it had to have been like pretty long time ago, which is like, you know, the Native Americans don't like you. Your people have come in and ruined everything. So you might yeah. deserve to get your head cut it, off or whatever happened. Is it like that Christian mi- uh, missionary who tried to um, convert the uncontacted tribe on North <gasps> Sentinel Island and nobody felt bad yeah, for him? Yeah, didn't he get killed? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, like, he knew he was going to get killed. I think he even, like, got his affairs in order before yeah. he left. So stupid. Yeah, it's just like, what did you expect? Right. We've all seen that picture of the plane with all the arrows at the bottom. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they don't want you here. <laughs> so, uh, the three sisters are usually seen at night with shining faces and glowing blue eyes. People see them standing with their arms crossed, or they see them um, just, like, watching as the car will drive by. Like, their heads will even turn as you pass by. So it's pretty creepy. Oh god, that's really creepy. So the the blue glowing eyes and the slowly turning yeah, head. Yeah, and there's three of them. I can like see that so clearly in my mind. Yeah, the fact that there's three of them as well. Probably like heads turning in yeah. unison. And they're nuns. So this is if you really... went to a Catholic yeah. school. <laughs> creepy anyway. <laughs> and if you went to a Catholic school, you're going to be like, oh, is my hand going to get hit with the ruler? <laughs> Although the nuns in my in my Catholic school did not wear habits. They all wore like cardigans and pencil skirts. Oh, interesting. And um expressions of defeat (laughs) good old sister stella good old sister stella she's doing well now we're heading to new jersey there's a place called shades of death road there's a lake that runs along the side of the road it's called ghost lake love it and locals frequently claim to see pillars of fog rising up out of the old lake bed it is said that along with the fog there are sightings of the dead it is rumored that these are spirits of Native Americans who were murdered by colonists and then disrespectfully disposed of in the lake. Again, just stop it with the colonization. Although pretty much everywhere has been colonized at this point. So <laughs> um, this road is also said to be haunted by a teenage girl who was killed in a car accident on her way to prom, as well as a group of murderous squatters who used to inhabit the area. Like I said, this road runs along a lake called Ghost Lake, which is like, okay. But back in the 18... 18- well, well, if you name the lake that, you're just inviting ghosts, right? Pretty much. But they named it because um, <laughs> back in the 1850s, there were a lot of settlers who like lived in the area and they began to die of malaria because of like the very marshy and swampy land around. It was just like a mosquito breeding ground. So this place is basically just Oof. plagued by death. Yeah, that just sounds like an absolute terrible place to visit. Right. It's like, you want to go to Ghost Lake on Shades of Death Road? <laughs> Sure, sounds like fun. Like, who wants to buy property here? Yeah. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> You'll be haunted by everyone, the colonists and the Native Americans. Native Americans with mosquito bug bites? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not to love. Would you like some ointment for those? The poor ghosts are just like, please, I'm so itchy. <laughs> <laughs> so this next story is the one that's in England. So we're heading across the ocean over somewhat near you, but not exactly it's closer than thank it's you close- for knowing the difference yeah, it's closer than new jersey <laughs> so this place is called kirkstone pass and it's in lake district england do you know where that is the yeah so the lake district is like a like a beauty kind of like a, a holiday destination okay in england so it's like a place that you go like just for like kind of where rich people go like they rich people would like own property there but like, yeah Regular people go there too, but it's like, oh, the Lake District. That's what it sounds like. When I was looking at a map, I think it's in the, like, northwest part of England. That sounds right, but I I would not know if you were wrong. (laughs) Northwest-ish. Anyway. (laughs) Northwest, (laughs) southeast-ish. So this road is famous for its many twists and turns and steep peaks. It is one of the UK's most dangerous roads, and it's apparently haunted too. One of the most famous ghosts to haunt this area is Ruth Ray, a woman who was traveling from Patterdale with her baby daughter to go see her sick father. The weather turned very quickly. It got snowy, and Ruth must have lost her way. She never made it to see her father, but was instead found, apparently by her husband, although a lot of these stories are like, oh, they were found by the family. I'm like, I feel like you'd be found by somebody else first, but who knows? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess the family would be looking for them. True. But um, she was found frozen to death with her daughter wrapped up tight and still alive in her arms. It's thought that she haunts the area to warn travelers of the dangers. And along this road, other people have seen a gray lady. 
the rumor is that the gray lady is a woman who was hanged for killing her own child and she screams at people who come in contact with her. Most sightings happen near a tree where it is assumed that she was hanged. Oh, wow. Yeah. There is also a sad little That's boy f- seen walking up and down the road. And it is said to be, Aww. it's said that he was a victim of a coach accident in the 17th century. I saw some articles saying that he was hit by a coach bus, which is like super sad. Yeah. <laughs> I thought. So he's like a road traffic victim and now he's just on this road with a lady who killed her kid and screams at everyone. <laughs> right. So he doesn't have any comfort. Poor little guy. Uh, So many of the ghosts said to be seen along the Kirkstone Pass also haunt the Kirkstone Inn, which is an inn that's right, basically right off the road. The Kirkstone Inn has a ghost who is said to be a previous employee. He stuck around and is now to be blamed for all the poster- poltergeist activity at the inn. Ooh, Ooh poltergeist. Kind of fun. <laughs> so our last stop on this haunted road tour is actually a truck stop, but I feel like it kind of ties into being a haunted road. It was also just really interesting, so I wanted to cover it. Um, So this is the Tri-County Truck Stop in Villa Ridge, uh, Missouri. I know how to read. According to truckers and locals, the Tri-County Truck Stop is legendary for their food, but also for strange occurrences. A man named Spencer Groff was a local to the area, and he seemed to have pretty bad luck. After multiple failures, he ended up opening a roadside mercantile for the benefit of travelers and local farmers. Eventually, they began building a permanent structure, but before the construction was complete, a storm came through and knocked the building to the ground. On July 23, 1927, the new building, named The Diamonds, was opened for business. This happened to be the same day that Route 66 opened right alongside The Diamonds. It grew and grew until it was eventually known as the world's largest roadside restaurant because, you know, of course, America always has to have the world's best, best and biggest and whatever. You can't just, why not? You can't just have like a really great truck stop. Sorry, can you hear the yeah. cat? <laughs> <You're>, <laughs> you, you and shouting on a point. <laughs> your cat's like, more haunted stories. Okay, cat, I'm listening. In 1947, <laughs> our Poor friend Spencer was once again met with tragedy as the entire building, known as the Diamonds, burned down in a fire. Um, At this point, he was elderly, so he turned the building over to one of his most loyal employees who carried out plans and built a brick building that still stands there today. This became the Tri-County Truck Stop. During the 1960s and 1970s, supernatural occurrences started happening. Employees and customers started complaining about being touched seeing ghostly figures, and hearing voices and whispers from people who weren't there. During the 1980s and 1990s, shadow figures started appearing, and it caused employees to refuse to go into the basement alone. They also started seeing objects move on their own. It also said that, like, when they would go into the basement, things would be throwing, being, things, oh my goodness, (laughs) things would be, like, thrown around at them, like, knives and stuff. Oh, God. So, yeah, so the employees were just, like, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> Absolutely not. Right. It's like, I'm making minimum wage, okay? I'm not going down where they're throwing knives yeah. at me, right? Where an unknown force is throwing a knife. <laughs> I'm working for tips, <laughs> right? <laughs> and not a knife tip. Around the year 2000, people started seeing a male ghost sitting in the dining room and doors wouldn't open even though they weren't locked. Objects moved across the tables while customers were dining. Appliances turned on and off on their own and invisible hands played with people's hair. Employees stopped oh, tolerating no. <laughs> employees stopped tolerating the activity when children began saying they saw a man with a knife attacking a bloody woman on the second floor staircase. Oh shit. Yeah. Pretty terrifying. It's like especially cuz it doesn't sound like obviously you would have found if something like that had happened there. Right. So like the fact that kids are seeing this happen, yeah. unless maybe it did happen there, it was covered up. The ghosts aren't at, aren't at rest. Yeah, it also makes me wonder if this guy Spencer, who was trying to build all these buildings, if the ghosts were like, "Don't do it, don't do it," and they were like, yeah. "We're doing like, it." That's why it burned down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It got hit by a storm. It burned down. It's like, come on, <laughs> just take a hint, okay? It's like we're gonna haunt the shit out of this if you build it, and he's like, "Huh?" <laughs> he just builds it anyway. Right, but so. Like, people were complaining about all these hauntings and stuff like that. And, like, truckers, like, you know, they drive through, they stay there and see all these haunted things. So, like, tons of people were complaining about this. And then um, groups of paranormal investigators, you know, got this information and they came to the Tri-County, Tri-County Truck Stop. That's like a mouthful. It is. 
So they came to the Tri-County truck stop and caught a lot of evidence on camera, such as items levitating, disembodied voices, ghostly images were captured on camera, and temperatures fluctuating. Ooh, like cold spots and stuff. Yeah. Gotta love a cold spot. Yeah. And if you, like, there's so much information on this truck stop, I obviously, like, kept it pretty short, but if you want to look up the tri-county truck stop in missouri there's like tons of information on it and like all the different things that were experienced there it's pretty wild there's like a lot of different hauntings yeah i guess when you when you factor like the amount of people that would travel through Mm -hmm. there all the time right so and then like late at night as well yeah because like it's a truck stop obviously so people are there like literally at all hours for sure it's plenty of opportunity for ghostly shit right and that's what they kind of say with ghost stuff too is that like places that are um not heavily populated but places where there's like tons of people coming and going is like usually more likely to be haunted i'm not sure why i don't know they have reasoning behind that but that's what i've heard well it's it's probably like they you have possibly like the ghosts that like are haunting the place but then like they say some people are haunted too right so like maybe some of the people are bringing like this energy with yeah them. and if anybody's haunted so it's they... gonna be a truck driver yeah definitely <laughs> <laughs> he's like staying up like 14 hours straight, yeah seeing shit in the room yeah having sex with other truckers probably has a past <laughs> Yeah. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Our poor guy Spencer would be sad to know that the Tri-County truck stop eventually closed, but the building still stands vacant along Route 66 to this day. So you can go there? Yeah. Paranormal investigators are always walking around there, I'm sure. Nice. Would you ever do like a a paranormal investigation? A hundred percent. Ev, when I was reading, when I was like researching this, I looked up if Chicago has like a paranormal group and I found that they do. And I was like so like what's the process like of getting into this group (laughs) yeah do i have to go through an initiation or what i'm really brave and i'm skeptic like i'm really good at explaining stuff away but i feel like if i was in like a place that was known to be haunted in the dead of night with nothing but me like a torch and some instruments that are going to make some weird noises it would freak the fuck out of me like i would be absolutely terrified yeah like i'm I'm brave to a point, but then I'm just like, <laughs> Yeah, I'm not, I would never do it by myself. Just, that's yeah. too terrifying. But if I was in a group, I would, yeah, I would go to like a haunted place. I would go for the adrenaline rush alone. Because <laughs> you would just be like, even making shit up, you're just like, I, I definitely heard something even though you yeah. didn't. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny because like, uh, I would never go to a haunted house. I don't know what, like you guys have haunted houses there and if they're the same sort of thing as they are over here. As in haunted houses, like, um, with actors and stuff. Yeah, where they, like, will jump out at you and things like that. It's just a thing at, like, Halloween. Right. That's um, the same here. In, like, in some places, there's a place that's, like, not that far from where I live called the Ulster American Folk Park. Okay. And it is kind of like an outdoor museum. So they, they've recreated a lot of, like, old, like, Celtic um like uh homes and like you know the way that they lived and their pottery and stuff and then there's like there's different areas that you can go to that shows like different cultures from like the stone age onwards at halloween you can go there on halloween night and it's all outdoors so it's like there's a forest through it and everything and you have to like walk through the forest that's cool i haven't done it because every time i want to do it it's completely booked out but it's like yeah these guys in cloaks and women dressed up as like old like ghosts and stuff will like come out at you from the woods and just scare the shit out of you yeah (laughs) yeah it's it's so funny because it's like i would never be down to do that but i would investigate like real haunted spaces (laughs) i think because like at a haunted house or like something like that it's like you know you're gonna get scared you know that something's gonna happen whereas these places like you're not sure Mm -hmm. about it it's weird as well because you can't really like all of those you know those like uh funny like viral videos of people reacting to haunted houses and stuff you really can't control your reaction (laughs) like i went to the london dungeons i went to them like but it's like literally you go in and like part of it's like a torture chamber oh, no. so they have like waxworks and stuff and all of that and then there's like a hall of mirrors and there's literally like people like jumping out at you and like screaming at you like in very strong cockney accents <laughs> and i'm like i'm not a violent person but i am so afraid that i'm gonna hit one of these actors yeah. <laughs> you're like, no get away i'm a definite screamer like if i got scared i'd just be like ah 
<laughs> I've also, what I've learned about myself is I'm a grabber. So if I'm there with anybody, I will just cling on to them for dear life, even to the point where it causes them pain. Oh no. My friend Megan will probably tell you, because like, I'm pretty sure I probably left like nail marks in her oh arms. My goodness. Like, when we did stuff like this. <laughs> there was a, a haunted, um, it's an art gallery and it was in an old soap factory in Minneapolis. Oh, They've cool. since shut down, unfortunately, but like apparently this place was like supposedly haunted. So they kind of leaned into it. And they did this thing called the Haunted Basement every year, like for the month of October. When I was like pretty young, not like super young, but like early 20s, I started volunteering there to like help set up the Haunted Basement. That ended up going off the rails because I ended up like being hospitalized for my dumb esophagus problem, <laughs> which is oh. really unfortunate because I really wanted to set it up. But it was supposedly like one of those scariest haunted house experiences, like at least like in the Midwest. It was all artists running it. So they knew how to get like super detailed and super gross with everything. And they would like, they had a, uh, like, I can't remember who it was, but they were like, it was like a local perfumery or something. And this perfumery was able to like replicate the smell of death. So like, oh, they like put that in there and they like, the guy who was running it, he was like, I've literally seen grown men shit their pants, like being in here <laughs> and run out screaming and stuff like that. So like, I often think as well, it would be so much fun to be an actor like at one of yeah, those definitely. things like just to scare the shit out of people <laughs> but i don't think i don't think i'm i'm tall enough <laughs> but because <laughs> they'd be like a tiny woman attacked me but you could be a leprechaun <laughs> yeah because I, I as we established last week i'm like <laughs> did you have a haunted road story when you were talking about hitchhikers there is a local story so literally where i am living right now it's like two different towns between here and where i grew up so to get there you have to drive through this massive like it's literally a glacial valley okay it's called barnes more gap or barnes gap so barnes like barna is the irish for gap so it's actually gap gap <laughs> <laughs> like people always shouldn't really call it barnes gap because it's just that just means gap gap um, That's so funny. But it's just like it's the gap in the two mountains, and more is more is the Irish for large, so it's large gap gap. <laughs> This isn't a tiny gap gap. <laughs> like, just so you, in case you think you missed it, like, it's the big gap. <laughs> I didn't know that it was such a common thing to have, like, hitchhiker ghosts as a kid. I didn't know that this was something all over the world, that there's stories of this all over the world. But I remember being told this. Actually, I think my, my aunt told me. Either my aunt or her husband, my uncle, told me. Um, and it's the same aunt who called me a ghosty wee girl. So uh, <laughs> she... Uh, she clearly was trying to trying to foster that in yeah. me. So she told me about the Barnesmore Gap ghost. Um, I've also seen her being referred to as the Blue Stacks Banshee. So the Blue Ta Blue Stacks is the name of the mountain range that the the valley okay. is in. So this is from our um the pinnacle of modern journalism, Donegal Daily. <laughs> hey, no no shade to Donegal Daily, but it's uh it's our little local like website. In December 1983, a local man from Donegal Town, where I'm from, was travelling back home from a dance in Jackson's Hotel Bal Buffet, which is like right next to actually where my mum grew up. Uh, it was around 2.30am. The weather wasn't kind. It was freezing outside with winds gusting and heavy, sleety showers. Gusts of wind swayed his car as he made his way towards Barnesmore Gap and found himself having to use the windscreen wipers at full speed several times in order to see the road ahead. He turned up the heat in his Ford Escort. I love that, that they said what kind of car he has. <laughs> and turned on the radio to take his mind off the hazardous drive ahead. As he approached the top of McGrory's Bray, so it's kind of like a sloping downhill, um, he okay. remembers thinking how few cars there were on the road that night. The fact that he had not met a single vehicle coming towards him since he left Balbuffet. Normally he would meet a few late night trucks or some late night drivers coming from Donegal Town, but tonight nothing, not a single set of headlights had been seen since his journey began. Just then he saw a light flash far in the distance. At first he thought it was a fleeting glimpse of an oncoming car as it routed the bends, or it was a car taking the road to Castle Derg, which is a place just over the border in Northern Ireland, over the old bridge. It only lasted a second, but it was definitely a flash of some kind. He remembers thinking it was kind of a strange colour, more of a blue-white than a normal headlight colour, but thought no more about it. Just then, a heavy static buzz came from the radio, drowning out the music, and then it just went silent. 
There's that freaking technology interference again. <laughs> yeah, always with the radio mm-hmm. too. The radio was still on, but no sound. Must be the weather in the mount- or the mountains affecting the signal, he thought. Funny, it had never happened before on his many trips on that road. Turning the dial ever so slightly, he found another radio station. He didn't know what station it was, and the music was from the 1940s. The big band era. Interesting. But at least it was... Unless he just found a station that was playing that music. The golden oldies <laughs> station. That's, that's probably all it is. It's like, all out 40s. At least it was music to take his mind off the ever-worsening weather outside. The sleet was now turning more into snow as the road approached the highest point of Bar- Barnesmore Gap at Loch Morn. Expecting to meet the oncoming car any second, he was puzzled when he didn't meet it. As he approached the Castle Derg turn, so that's like, there's like a straight road, and there's like one little turn veering off, so he was like approaching that turn. As he was approaching the Castle Derg turn off, with its old bridge sulking in the darkness, he saw something in the junction, but it wasn't a car. It was a young woman. She was standing by the roadside, arm outstretched, as if thumbing a lift but it was more of a wave than a thumbing motion. After a moment's hesitation, he braked and stopped in order to reverse back and give the woman a lift. He was startled when, before he had a chance to reverse, the rear door opened and the woman got in. How had she moved so fast? He had pulled up nearly 100 yards from where she'd been standing. Maybe the heavy sleet and wind had confused him and he'd stopped faster than he thought. He thought she whispered thank you as she closed the door, but maybe it was the howling wind. He wasn't sure. Starting the car again, he asked her to say where she wanted dropped off, and she answered. Uh, she just answered yes. Not very specific. Where do you want to live to? <laughs> yes. <laughs> he goes typical woman. <laughs> but he swears that the word yes sounded more like the hiss of a snake. No, thank you. <laughs> and he started to feel an unexplained feeling of fear and sorrow, a feeling that he's never felt from that day in 1983 until today. So like the fact that she's sitting in the back seat of his car hissing at him. <laughs> Although I am kind of picturing Nadia is from he... what we do in the shadows. <laughs> yes. Or like bingo card. Yes. Check. We we said what we do in the shadows yet again. <laughs> but also, is he sure it wasn't Medusa? Yeah. It's like she just uh, little snakes. Hissing. She's just really lost. <laughs> she found her way away from um, Greece. Yeah. <laughs> She's like somehow I ended up in Ireland. I don't really know what's going on. And it's on. freezing. <laughs> I need a lift. Unlike today, the road narrowed as they drew closer to Betty's pub. So there's like a pub right in the middle of the mountains. Okay. And having to concentrate on keeping the car on the road, he could only grab quick glimpses in the rearview mirror and a silent passenger in the back seat. She sat in silence, staring out the window into the darkness. Her face was extremely pale. But she was Irish like. <laughs> <laughs> We're all pale. That's that's not like a that's not a hot take there. It's kind of like uh like if the police are like, what do they look like? You don't even have to mention that they're pale because everybody's yeah. pale. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's actually weird. Like if they're really really tan, that's when you mention it. <laughs> Although he said she looked almost blue from the cold, a blue list that reminded him of the flash that he had seen earlier. With her face so close to the window, he remembers thinking it was strange that her breath wasn't steaming up the window from which she stared. Was she even breathing? It had suddenly gotten very cold in the car and he reached down to turn up the heat. The heat was up full. First the radio and now the heater. He would need to take the car to the mechanic in the morning to have the electrics checked. Passing Biddy's pub, she never glanced at it, her eyes instead transfixed on the mountainside to her left. Not a word did she say. About a mile after Biddy, she spoke her first words in a whisper. Stop here. The next word she spoke chilled the man to the bone and he gulped and paused. As he told me this story. Stop here. This is where I died. Whoa. Ignoring the icy conditions, the man slammed on his brakes, but she was gone. The rear seat was empty. The door unopened. Far off in the distance, he saw the blue-white flash once more, just as his radio announced the 3 a.m. news on RT Radio 2. The end. The end. Yeah, so she was very explicit that she was dead. Yeah. She wasn't like Resurrection Mary who just disappeared out of the car. Yeah, it's like, you know, leave them wanting more, just be a little bit mysterious. She's like, no, I died here. I was expecting it to be like, and you're going to die here too. And then she grabs him. (laughs) I have to admit, when you first said haunted roads, that you wanted to cover haunted roads, my first thought was magic roads. Have you ever seen a magic road? No. (laughs) So there are a couple of magic roads in Ireland. What they are, are optical illusions. So it looks... Like you're driving up a hill, whatever way, when you look out your like front window, it looks like you're driving up a hill, 
but if you put your car like in neutral and you just let off the brake, your car will roll down the hill. Massive attraction. <laughs> Have you ever been to one of these places? I haven't been on one, but I've seen like people on like Instagram like sit, like filming as they do it. It's uh it's pretty cool. Yeah. I'll see if I can find you a video of one. Oh, it's called the Mystery Spot and it is in Santa Cruz County, California. There's also an episode of Supernatural about that. Oh, really? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> um, I think it's the one where Dean keeps dying. So that's that's um, something light um, for all the nightmares that you gave everybody in this episode. Yeah, for sure. So if, if you want to, Google Mystery Spot in, what was it, Santa Cruz County, California? Yes. It's in California. So Mystery Spot, California, you'll probably, it'll probably come up. You can look at that and, instead of thinking about um, giggling ginger men in the back of your car. Yeah. Like clinging onto the side of your car. You could also, yeah, you could also um, look up our Instagram page, Rowan and Pine. Hey. On Instagram. <laughs> the and is spelled out, as I've stated before, but maybe you haven't listened. And we are also on Facebook and TikTok. Facebook, we're just Rowan and Pine Podcast. TikTok, we are Rowan Pine Pod. And we need some love over on TikTok because, actually, it's my fault because I only post when we have a new episode. <laughs> I think TikTok, TikTok, you're basically supposed to be posting like five times a day or they just don't care about you. Pretty much. It seems like you're supposed to really like flood it and hope something happens. Um, if you have stories or comments that you want to submit to us, it's Rowan and Pine Pod at gmail.com. Again, the and is spelled out. So it's Rowan, A N D, Pine pinepod at gmail.com if you guys could rate us on spotify or apple podcasts and i don't think you can leave reviews on spotify correct no i don't think you can write reviews but we yeah. will also be on google podcasts pretty soon i've submitted our yeah. feed to it i'm just waiting for it to be approved and come back so you can that's exciting can rate us on that also we are thinking of adding our episodes onto youtube so let us know if that's something that people would like because i know some people like to fall asleep to youtube i like to just use youtube to get their content so that's definitely something that we can look into um so yeah we'll just oversaturate right. you guys and you'll find us everywhere yeah <laughs> hopefully you guys like us um like i said if you have any comments or anything and like we're still pretty new so if there's anything that you think is not working for us like please let us know we want to yeah. hear it as long as you're not mean about it. <laughs> if it's constructive criticism, we'll take it. Yeah. And also episode suggestions. I have now had three people ask me to cover Irish vampires specifically. So that might be something that I'll, uh, that'll be coming up soon. So, so look out for Irish vampires, Irish I guess. Irish vampires, yeah. They're just, um, <laughs> yeah. I can imagine feeding on the Irish population would be a lot more fun than most other places, you know? <laughs> just mostly whiskey. <laughs> Why is Mostly that? whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> so my name was emily and i have been Neve, and this was rowan and pine our episode on haunted roads which is i think this is our fifth episode six is it or no it's gonna be sick we record in advance so this is our sixth episode thank you so much for listening thank you and fuck yeah folklore fuck yeah folklore bye bye Ha 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 